Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Cullen and Curtis in the Morning. We are in May. Wow. Cullen, may the 8th be with you. Man. I tried. Uh, so this <laughs> is a podcast morning show uh, for the weekends starring Cullen. Hi. I'm doing great. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for joining me. Yeah. And then also myself, Curtis, we talk about video games, specifically PlayStation Network related stuff. It's a lot of PSN, kind of indie games, downloadable stuff. Sometimes Amiibo. Uh, sometimes Amiibo, sometimes Resident Evil, uh, sometimes Persona 5. So it's not all indie stuff, but, you know, we try to stick to that as much as we can. We're yep. from PSNStores.com. Uh, today we got mostly just news. We try to keep this show a little short. Sometimes we have longer discussions. But, it, you know, a lot of stuff happened this week, Colin. But a lot of that stuff revolved around some of the bigger releases of the holiday season. Notably Call of Duty and Battlefield. There was the Uncharted 4 embargo as well. And then, like, Dishonored 2 had some, some more information pop out. But most of those games are, like, bigger, you know, AAA budget games. And so not a lot of stuff for indie games or kind of discussions that we could break down. But... We do have a decent little list of news to cover, so we're just going to dig right into it. Um, Colin Downwell mm -hmm. is coming to PlayStation 4 and Vita May 24th. Downwell was a mobile game released, I believe, last year. Mm -hmm. It's kind of this like vertical game where you were like continuously going down yeah. a well, presumably. I would assume but you so. had like You had like boots that fired you know, like bullets out. Or something there's like monsters and and whatnot so colin tell me about this vertical scrolling option uh so yeah i don't know if it was in the blog post but i saw it on twitter uh that devolver mm -hmm. digital the publisher uh, had a screenshot of the game running on vita and uh they're playing it just with a vertical scroll option so like usually like normally how you would hold your phone up vertically um mm -hmm. and then you would play like that um yeah this so there's an option to Play it vertically. You can turn the Vita, which I'm a big fan. Makes of those a lot things. of sense because yeah, I really like. Those yeah, because like because with the Vita specifically, like the way this this the screen is oriented in this game, like it, it's going to give you a lot more room mm -hmm. to work with. Yep. So that would make that makes a good amount of sense. Um, so that's cool. That game is going to be five dollars. It'll be crossed by uh, with PS4 and Vita. Are you excited for this? Um, I might check it out. Um. Okay. I don't, I've thought I think it's maybe it, this, like two dollars on phone or something like that. I thought about trying it yeah. out. Yeah, this game like really caught fire for a, I would say a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. I think it was like sometime last year, late maybe late not last year. Yeah, I remember there was like this two to three week period where just everybody I followed on Twitter were ta was talking about Downwell, and was like really hyping it up. So I'm curious to check it out. If nothing else, it looks pretty cool. Um, Binding of Isaac Afterbirth. It's coming to PS4 on May 10th. This is going to be a $11 expansion. Um, so this is something that's been out on PC for a little while. Uh, the port's finally making its way over to, to PS4. Colin, I, I don't know about you, but I feel like this is a game that none... Like, it's pretty well-loved. I think a lot of people really like Binding of Isaac. I don't know that anyone on the PSN store's staff really took the binding of isaac at all i don't know if did you ever? No, because yeah it was one of the free ps plus games and i don't even think i ever yep. started it uh it just oh, wow. it just looked like something that just didn't appeal to me like at all um mm -hmm. i got a friend that was really big on it on pc and i don't know i just didn't really i didn't see anything in that that made me want to play it mm -hmm. yeah um I played probably a few hours of it. I know, I think Chris played a bit of it. Uh, I remember we had, like, a podcast shortly after that game came out, and we, we all were talking about it, and none of us seemed all that hyped yeah. up on it. One of the big things was just, like, the art style we, yeah, we didn't really care for. But it's it's strange because I think much like Spelunky, in a way, like, those are two games that are very much well-loved amongst a lot of people, and they just never really clicked with anybody on this site yeah. uh, for whatever reason. However, that said, Afterbirth does add a lot of bosses, new areas, um, so, like a new playable character. It seems like it adds a lot of stuff there. Uh, the blog post is like 100 hours of new content. And it's like, yep, I bet. <laughs> uh, but also, like, part of this thing, I remember reading an article about 
when this came out on PC, apparently there's some like really super crazy obscure secrets uh, and weird like ARG stuff going on outside of the game. It sounds fascinating, but I haven't read too much into it. So that is coming out May 10th. That is next week. Oh my God. Yes, it is. I, <laughs> this, uh, this year is flying by. Okay. Not is coming to PS4 this summer. Um, Colin, have you ever, do you know about these interlocking wood puzzles? Not really. Not really? Not really. Not with a K. Yep. So, Not is a, uh, it's a game where, okay, so there are these, like, wooden pieces, sort of tetramino shaped, but maybe a little bit different, not quite, uh, but they're, they're all interlocking. So there's all these different pieces that interlock. And so it's a, it's kind of a puzzle uh, where you have to rotate these pieces in such a way that you can kind of untangle all of the different blocks. And I guess this is a real thing, kind of sort of like Rubik's Cube sort of style puzzle. Um, and so if you look at the screenshots, it, it's a very like kind of realistic looking uh, game. Obviously very simple. It's just like a block, you know, it's, or multiple blocks. Yeah. Uh, but that's coming to PS4 this summer. It looks really interesting. I'm kind of excited for it. Like I, I think those kinds of, kinds of like puzzles and brain teasers are really cool. And yeah, I've never, I don't know, like I've never seen this. Like or maybe I have. I just haven't really been familiar the with only, this. Kind the of only thing I was thinking about is like it almost sounds like tumble to me, but you're doing it like in, re- yeah, in reverse, sure. maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, that's just sure. what I was thinking of. Yeah, so it looks really cool. Um, I'm excited to check it out. Yep. Uh, Soft Body is coming to PS4 May 17th. This is another game that I, I feel like I've seen trailers for over the past year and a half. I think Eric was like the first person who actually showed me a trailer of this some time ago. Uh, I Colin, do you know what this game is? Have Not you... really. Um, oh, okay. I, I saw the so post. And... I can do my best. Okay. I can do my best to describe it. So you control... It, it seems like this mix of like kind of this intense or kind of tense like action or pseudo action. I don't really know. But also while also being very um, kind of zen like. Mm-hmm. Sort of uh, you can just kind of like just zen out or zone out while you're playing this game. Yeah. Uh, you control a snake like uh, thing that. As you move around, you're, like, revealing parts of the each level. So there's, like, a level with, like, blocks, and they're all designed in a certain way. And so you, you move around, and as you move closer to these, the walls or the, the blocks or what, or obstacles or whatever, um, you're unveiling more of them. And I think I it appears that the goal of each level is to unveil the entire stage. Yeah. But as you're doing that, and, like, you're, you're moving around, it's very, like, it's really, like, nice music playing, you know, uh... But at the same time, there's also, like, kind of a bullet hell aspect of where you're, like, avoiding a lot of, like, bullets that are shooting at you from different enemies and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, it looks really interesting. Uh, apparently, I guess you can eventually control two of these snakes at once. Oh, okay. So, yeah, like, it looks really, really interesting. And it kind of, at least the blog post made it sound like it was kind of straddling that line of, like, kind of a tense, like, really difficult uh kind of gameplay but also like being something that you can just kind of zone out to which is interesting it, it looks really cool yeah if nothing else yeah so that's all i got to say about soft body yeah i yeah i just i i i hope it goes maybe more zen more than sure i guess more of the bullet hell um because i'm mm-hmm. not i mean i don't mind i guess those games but i'm usually not kind of a fan of it uh or i'm just not really those types of games I really like the Zen yeah. uh, kind of zone out. Well, it doesn't. It doesn't. From from the the video or whatever, it didn't look like it was super intense in that direction. Well, so I don't. Know. I was wondering because I was seeing like a lot of a lot of projectiles flying. It was hard. Yeah, it was, it's hard to tell. Uh, so Infinium Strike. Yes. This is coming to PS4, Q3 2016. Yep. So fall, I guess. Yeah. I I don't know anything about this game, okay. but. You do. You yes. said you played this? Yeah, I played it at PAX South. Um, at the time, it was only uh, announced for PC and Xbox One. I believe this is a Kickstarter game. Uh, so it's basically like a real-time strategy game uh, where you, you don't really control the ship, but you have this massive kind of frigate in space. And it's uh, you've got like basically like four quadrants, and you have like uh, 
five or six uh, turret areas that you can put turrets down. And uh, basically, like, you're using the D-pad. Uh, you're switching between different quadrants. And you're putting different turrets and different, uh, you know, other kind of ships to send into battle. Those kind of things. And there'll be uh, enemies that come from different quadrants. You'll need to direct your attention to each and each quadrant. You know, like if quadrant two is getting overrun, you have to over, uh, switch over there. And uh, maybe you have to dismantle a turret to put down a turret that can reach like this certain enemy that's shooting you from far away. Stuff like that. And like, oh, you have to build this turret to like you know, have a, have an EMP that goes and destroys the shield of this turret or of this ship. Um, mm. so when I played it, I didn't really walk away like super impressed. Um, and I, I think the game, you know, was still early. Um, of course, but, uh, I wasn't, I wasn't too like enthralled when they talked about, they even have like their own lore in the game. Um, that was pretty deep. Okay. Um, and I don't really, I don't really, I, I, I wasn't really, like, grabbed by what, what they were kind of describing to me. Um, but I, I just played it, and I didn't really think it was really all that much special. Uh, the controls were a little tough to get used to, because, like, scrolling up on the D-pad gives you one menu, and, like, scrolling left on the analog stick gives you, like, another menu, and it's it's it gets kind of confusing that you have to, like, understand, like, which menus where. Um, and like all of the face buttons give you different menus too. Um, so, um, yeah, coming out Q3 2016, um, not, not super hyped about it. Um, but, uh, mm -hmm. maybe looking to check it out, uh, when it's finished. Okay. Well, <laughs> that maybe wasn't the best sales pitch. It wasn't, but, but yeah. <laughs> but there's always hope, you know, sometimes yeah. you... Sometimes you come back or you play the full game and it's like, okay, you know, you see what they're going for. Maybe the lore is really great. Yeah. And again, I was, I was just, you know, the only thing I got to see was just a, you know, and, a simple. And so you played this slice. at PAX? PAX South, yeah. Right? PAX yeah. South. Was this the most recent PAX? Yeah, the one that was just in January. Okay. Yep. Okay. So. So maybe there's still hope for Infinium Strike. Yeah. Okay. I mean, a lot of a lot of weird things are happening in the end times, Colin, mm -hmm. which we are in. We are in the end times. Uh, and, you know, we don't have a lot of time left. Uh, you know, I, I think recently we said Mighty Number no. 9 is never coming out. Yep. And if that were to be the case, then we don't... <laughs> we have only got about a month and a half to go. <laughs> uh, because Mighty Number no. 9 got a release date. It is gold. It has gone gold, Colin. That's you, big. Like, it, the game is finished. It is finished. I, and it is I guess out, so. It is coming out June 21st, 2016. They did it, maybe. No, not yet. Let's, I can't say that okay. yet. I guess we can't. And we'll, you know, we'll cover this game. You know, we're going to, we'll have a review for it, I, I assume. So, like, when, what, how long has it been? Has it been, is it three years? Has it been three years now? I think it's two? just been two, yeah. It feels longer than that. Yeah, it might be. I mean, this this was, you know, one of... This was a game announced at PAX one year. I guess uh, I guess it would have been PAX East. Went on Kickstarter. Just hugely successful. Um, All the Mega Man fans out there, including me included, just so excited. You know, we were in this weird funk where it felt like Mega Man was dead. And, and here, here it was, Inafune... The hero we all needed to come and save the day, mm -hmm. Mighty Number no. Nine, and wow, has so much changed since then. Colin, do you are do you have any any inkling, any little tiny bit of excitement for this game? Current hype index is twenty out of a hundred. Okay, so I guess something. But not yeah. much. How about you, Curtis? I, it's so weird. It sounds like I hope is like, in your voice. You have. I have hope. You have. I hope. always have hope. But the Curtis from like two or three years ago, remember this was. I was like, this was like, this was one of my most anticipated games. Mm -hmm. When it was first announced, I was like, yes, yes, this is going to be so great. I am so excited. Here's my twenty bucks. Uh, until I ended up rescinding that 
Kickstarter pledge towards the end of the campaign, <laughs> um, which history has proven me correct on. I think I feel okay about that now. Yeah. But I was I was super super like pumped up about that game. I was so excited, uh, and I was not the only one. And between delays and other weird side Kickstarters and anime projects and other games that may or probably aren't gonna happen, I don't. It's so it's such a crazy story, like the fall of Mighty Number no. Nine. Yeah. Like, uh, it's so strange. And there was a time when. I would be so like, I'm gonna buy this day one. It I just I just am. Doesn't really matter. Yeah. Even if reviews come out early and say it's bad, I'm I'm gonna buy it because I need to know. But uh, I would, I would be if this was a, like a year ago, I would be super excited. I'd be like, yeah, I can't wait. Month and a half. It's can't wait. But the Curtis in 2016 looks at that date and thinks. Huh. We'll be playing like No Man's Sky. And let's well, see, that's the the nukes are gonna drop on June twentieth <laughs> and we will all be in space. Yeah, we'll we'll all have to go to space. We'll have it's to a, go it's a parallel to to No Man's Sky. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. I, I I hope it's good. I I think I don't know. I don't think it's gonna be terrible. I think it'll simply exist and, and be like, well, I, guess, I don't know. I was okay, I guess. It was fine. It's fine. It's all fine. Yeah. Everything's fine. I Maybe <laughs> the game's really made some progress, but I just, just from what I've seen footage-wise of that game, it just does not look appealing to me, like, at all. It just doesn't feel like it's something that's very polished. Um, I don't know. I mean, there's... Mm. There are so many things about the game that I have reservations about because mm-hmm. I, I felt like the more and more they talked about it, the more and more I've, I was like, I d- do you need voice acting? Like, do you need this? You need line? online. Is, uh, that's um, <laughs> um, the whole mechanic of like, like diving into enemies after you kill them, like to fully finish them off. It could be cool. Could be interesting. Uh, there, I don't know. I just. They've made it very, very hard to be excited about this game. And I really want to. Perhaps naively, I really want to be excited about this. But I don't know. We'll see. And it's also going to be really hard to... I think it'll be hard for most people to to be like, well, do I get Mighty Number no. 9 or do I get No Man's Sky? Yeah. Which I believe is the same day. Yeah, I think it is. So, yeah, good luck. Good luck with that one. Now, one question I had was, did we know about the Vita version? Was there a Vita version? Yo. Is that getting pushed <laughs> back is what I heard maybe? That and the 3DS version are both uh, not coming out that okay. day. Will it come out this year, so, do you think? Sorry, sorry, Vita fans. Think it'll even come out this year? I don't think it'll come out. Oh, you don't think it'll ever come out? No. Hmm. If it does, it'll be like a year and a half yeah, from now. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. So game changer game changer hey colin do you have uh anything else interesting happened to you this week anything you want to talk about so it was it was crazy so um as we know we've been venturing into china recently no it's not (laughs) and (laughs) okay (laughs) and we're just like you and me uh my name's sherry by the way and your name's jake and so Uh we're just like riding this boat and then, like, all of a sudden, I think, like... Sp- we're taking down, like, taking down BOWs. We're taking down BOWs, you know, like we do. You know. And then Spider-Man just shows up and just sweeps me off my feet and saves me and throws me into your arms. hmm And we're like, thanks, Spider-Man. And then and we then just burst out laughing just- for, like... It just ten, vanishes. Ten minutes. Like there's no reveal. Like Resident Evil Six is a atrocious game. Wow. There is any number of things wrong with it, but we've been yeah we've been playing through that game and streaming it and uh, the archives will be caught up this weekend. I guess there's been like six parts, so five or six parts so far. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got the first two campaigns done. We got Leon left. Yep. And Ada, I guess. 
You're so excited. Here's the crazy the crazy part about that is like if you had just played Jake's campaign, you would have seen that scene where unnamed person is just swoop swings down with a grapple hook mm-hmm. or spider webs. I don't know. It's a grapple hook, yeah. It saves you, know, you yeah. Drops you off. And it's all within like a split like two like one to two seconds. Mm-hmm. Just two very short little clips. You don't really get to see you see enough to know that they sw- they're swinging in. You have no idea who the, who it is. You can probably guess if you're familiar with the series. Yeah. But they, like never in that campaign it, it, throughout Jake's campaign they don't they never even say it. And like it's such this crazy out of left field moment amongst a series of crazy out of left field moments that make no sense whatsoever. I don't have any words to really other than like atrocious one of the greatest moments and what is what is what has happened to my beloved franchise and i'm late to the party on this one uh i don't know i i really like i i still even two days later i still have nothing to really even i can't i can't comprehend what happened in chapter four of jake's campaign just have to embrace it man just embrace i guess i guess you do just embrace the darkness. Sometimes you just gotta, you just gotta lie you go to, about yourself, and you just gotta be like, go "Yes, I heaven. love this." Yeah, yeah, this is fine. Yeah, this is fine. Oh. I. So anything, anything good happened to you this week? Anything good happened? Playing to me? any, any, any games you played that are that you like? Hmm. Hmm. What did you have in mind? That good, huh? No, I was just wondering. Oh, okay. If there's anything else you wanted to add before we wrap this show up? Oh no, uh, obviously, uh, the Spider-Man moment was one of the great moments of my week. I will probably remember that for a very long time. That was a great moment. I'll say that. Um, I'll say that. I, at least the game has given me uh, laughter. Yeah. At least I I have that. Yeah. 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 But yeah, I can't really. <laughs> been been playing Alienation. Okay. Uh, so you haven't you have started playing that more? A little bit, yeah. I think I'm okay. I'm a so few we need we need to still we need to yeah we, we need, need to, to co-op that at yes, some point. Yes, we do absolutely. Um. Yeah. Because um, that game is definitely designed to be played with more than one person. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So I don't know, and that's yeah, yeah. That's pretty much me. Like I've also played a good bit of Alienation, mostly just Dark Souls three. Yeah. So, and we can, we don't need to talk about that. Just know that it's the best game. Maybe. Maybe it's the best. Is it better than Dragon Quest Builders? So, we have a question, closing question. We don't always have these, but sometimes we like to end the show with a closing question. And that one is directly inspired by Chapter 4 of Jake's campaign in Resident Evil 6. We have written down here, what's your most memorable quote? Wait, is that Spider-Man moment? But we, I, you know, in the spirit of this week and the things that are happening this week, uh, I'd like to ask Colin, yes, and to our listeners, our viewers, what's your favorite incarnation of Spider-Man? Um, probably Maximum Carnage on the Super Nintendo. Okay. It's just like basic Spider-Man, I guess. Okay. But. That or the like okay. N sixty four original PlayStation Spider Man game. I would say one of those two. Oh man. Wow, you you really dig way like way back. Oh yeah. Uh I'll give my full answer next week, along with our listeners and viewers, but I will say my favorite Spider Man game, Spider Man two. Hmm. I played a little bit of that. Never played much though. The game. That game is great. Hmm. I remember it being great. I'll say yeah. that. I at least remember that game being legitimately great. Hmm. Whether or not it still is today, I don't know. Yeah, but I did like everything in that game. It was so much fun. Uh, cool. I think that's gonna do it for this week. Once again, just you know, kind of a light news week. Not really big discussion topics to be had. Uh, Colin, thanks for joining me. Absolutely, thank you. Yeah, and thanks for listening or watching the video. If you're watching the video, um, let us know what your favorite Spider-Man incarnation is. Uh, what do you think about Mighty Number no. Nine? Are you still excited for that game? If so, 
Let us know why. And if not, then we... we let us know why as well, but we probably already know. <laughs> Hopefully Bloodstain pans out a bit better. Yeah, and ukulele and... And all ukulele, the, all yeah, the and all ones. those other games. Yeah, all yeah. the other ones. Shenmue and... Oh, yeah. boy. <laughs> oh, no. All right, that's going to do it for this week. Thank you for listening, as always. And we'll until next time... Colin, close us out. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a spider can. Swings a web, I forgot the rest of the lyrics. So here's the closing of Colin and Curtis in the Morning.